Hey folks, welcome to our FBN webinar series. I am this evening's host. I'm Holly Thrasher. I'm a senior staff agronomist here at FBN, and this evening we're going to spend some time talking about pre-harvest considerations. Joining me on the call are also Darren Lickfeld, who is the head of agronomy, as well as Dan Zook, who is going to be helping with um, the slide deck. Okay, so we're gonna um, take a couple minutes and let a few more people have the opportunity to log in. But in the meantime, I do wanna point out that um, we would love to have you ask questions as we go through the webinar this evening. And the way that you can do that is by going to the control panel. As you'll see there, that allows you to uh, put down the drop down box and submit questions. Darren and I will try to answer those either as we go through the webinar or kind of have as a wrap up there at the end. The other way that you can reach out to the agronomy team if you happen to have a question that comes up after the webinar is over that you think of or if you happen to be listening to this as a recording later on down the road, um, you can ask questions or get input from the agronomy team by texting the word agronomy to the phone number 326-326. Um, and if you have a hard time remembering that number, it's just FBN, FBN on your phone. So I think we have um, quite a few of you who have logged in. And we'll go ahead and get started this evening. Again, I said, like I said at the beginning, my name's Holly Thrasher, and I'm on the agronomy team. I am a Kansas native, grew up in South Central Kansas, and went to K-State where I got both my bachelor's and my master's degrees in agronomy. When I finished up my master's degree, I went to work in the seed industry, and that's where I've spent 10 years of my career is in the seed industry. So as we get close to harvest, um, for many of us, this is a really exciting time of the year to me just based off of my background. So um, I'm really happy that I have the opportunity to go through some of these pre-harvest considerations with you. So yesterday, FBN did a poll looking at what the harvest progress is to date. Um, so of the FBN members, it looks like we had just over 1,200 farms that responded. So this is a really nice visual showing what the harvest progress update is so far. Certainly many of you in the south are um, plowing through harvest and um, this is a really timely topic I think because so many of us are close to or getting close to harvest starting. So 2019 has certainly been a year for the record books in a, in a lot of way. So we had um, quite a few challenges in areas with planting and certainly a lot of challenges that we faced throughout this growing season. But I think we finally come to the point that uh, that finish line is finally in sight. And I hope that um, you're sitting in a place where you feel like you're finishing strong, kind of like that runner on the left. Um, but again, with all of those challenges we've faced, I can certainly understand um, if you're feeling more like the runner there on the right, just thankful to finally be at the finish line. So as we go through this, hopefully there are a few um, topics that we discussed that can kind of give you um, that little extra um, piece of information that will help you finish strong going into this harvest, harvest season. So as we go through this, there are two um, important things I'd like you to keep in mind. So the first, the first one is that we're going to talk about 2019 evaluations and so things that will help us to prioritize harvest based off of how the crop looks. The other thing is looking at 2020 decisions. So what do we need to keep in mind um, that we want to, that we did this year that were successful or um, things that we need, may need to reconsider or change for next year um, when we're making those 2020 planting decisions. So one of the first things that I like to do when I get into a plot or I get into a field is start evaluating the harvest appearance. 
So one of the first things, of course, is going to be stay green. That's something that will um, kind of stick out pretty pretty clearly. So stay green is important because it allows that plant to have continued photosynthesis and is, is adding yield. Really good stay green though usually means that we're going to have slower dry down. So keep that in mind as you're evaluating the fields on your farm to start looking at how you want to plan out your harvest schedule. Um, this is also a really good time to determine the hybrids that you want to plant back next year. Just weighing um, not only your, the relative maturities that you're planting on your farm, but some of the late plant health and stay green um, that you would like to see um, across your farm. As you're evaluating fields, um, are you starting to see tops that are coming out? So the, the tops of the corn plant coming out themselves um, isn't necessarily a bad thing, but um, as I see that, that's a good indicator for me that I wanna get into that field and start looking at um, the stalks and, and stalks integrity. And um, just overall late season intactness um, and it may be an indicator that that field is drying down pretty quickly. So if you do feel fine fields or hybrids that the tops are um, starting to come out, that's one I would certainly get into and check that stock integrity. I'd also want to check, you know, that ear shake, ear shank strength um, to make sure that we're not dropping any ears. So as you think about stock integrity and standability, um, do we see any kind of stock lodging occurring? So um, stock lodging is when we start seeing that um, stock break off below the ear. And this is really gonna cause us a lot of problems, um, not only in the yield loss from losing those ears, but then also it's going to slow down harvest and is potentially gonna cause issues next year if we've got volunteer corn to deal with. So in addition to the stock rots, um, we're gonna talk about that later, weather and corn borer can influence um, some stock lodging issues. So something else to consider that um, you may wanna make some management changes on that can affect stock lodging would be your plant population. So if your plant population is too get too, get too high, um, that can also increase your incidence of lodging occurring. So diving a little bit more into the stock rot topic, um, you can see here that I have a couple of pictures showing um, there, there on the right, that's a picture of premature death or dieback, and that is being caused by anthracnose. So if you do see dieback or lesions on the stock, like that picture there in the middle, those are gonna be a pretty good indicator that you may have some issues um, for, for late season standability. So um, if, you, if you notice those in fields, I would get out there and do some scouting um, in quite a few, you know, 10 places across your field and do a pinch or a push test. So to do a pinch test um, and evaluate uh, your stock strength, what you'll do is um, one to two nodes above the soil surface, you're gonna just pinch that, um, that stock and um, you'll notice very easily and very quickly if you have stock integrity issues. Um, for the push test, do, do uh, 10 to 20 plants and what you'll do is just go out there and push those at about a 45 degree angle and see how well um, those stocks are able to stand that. If you see about 10 to 15 percent, um, if you're finding that level of stock rot present in your field, you're going to want to prioritize those fields for an early harvest to help try minimize any yield harvest losses that you may have, just because you know that those, those are fields or hybrids that um, the stock integrity may be going downhill. Uh, this is also a really good time if, if you've dealt with anthracnose in the past. Um, this is also a good time to start evaluating the hybrids that may be more susceptible and have a conversation with your seed supplier 
on um, selecting some hybrids that have a little bit more anthracnose resistant, resistance. In addition to the stock rot evaluation, there's also this, this is a really good time to look at the foliar diseases that you had this season. So did you have them um, or did you have a pretty clean field? If you did have some diseases, was it at a threshold level that you decided to treat it or not treat it? So um, just weighing the options that you made throughout the season um, to see if you think it paid off, but then also how did, um, how did that, if you, if you did end up spraying, how did you, how does your standability look um, going into harvest? So that may cause some, some issues that you'll want to prioritize fields harvested first. So if you remember back to planting time, which seems like it was longer ago than what it actually was, um, did you have uneven emergence at that time? Did you have skips or double? doubles that were showing up and as you go out there what did you see back in, in a planting time and spring time um, how does that correlate with some of the the ear placement the size and consistency of the ears that you're seeing in the field so in Wisconsin and Illinois there's been data that's shown um, a six to seven percent yield decrease when your plant emerges ten days later so keep that in mind um, that some of the some of the unevenness that you're seeing in your ear size may be attributed to uh, issues that you had at emergence. Like I said, it, springtime was was not that long ago, but it's easy to forget what we were dealing with just a few months ago. I mean, this is a really good time to think about um, what caused those late emergers. Was it a poor seed to soil contact? Um, certainly 2019 we were in a rush to get the crop in the ground and um, there may have been there may have been some planting errors but was it something that needs more attention like a planting issue um, such as a singulation on your planter so even though 2019 was a pretty extreme year I think it's important to to remember that going into 2020 we can't overlook these basics that really have a huge impact on yield, getting that good, even um, stand and emergence next season. What do we need to do based off of the crop we have today to do better next year? As you're out there evaluating ears, it's a, it's a good time to look at um, the hybrids you have. How did you manage them? So were those hybrids in the population right for, for the yield environment that you had, um, your fertility program, the soil type that they were placed on, and, and the yield potential that you felt that you had. So the picture that I have up here is um, a representation of um, the four years on the right were at a much higher population. So as you can see, that's caused a significant amount of tip back. Um, so that was probably too high for that specific hybrid. Um, the, the two ears on the left, um, you have to ask yourself the question, do you feel like you're getting the best ROI for the management that you put on it? Or um, are they filled to the tip and we maybe we're missing some yield potential by not planting a little bit higher uh, population. So really just thinking through what you did, um, did it work, could you do better next year? As you're out looking at, at years, I always really like this Ohio State um, publication looking at abnormal corn ears and the causes for them. So if you stumble across something in the field and you go, what in the world caused, caused my ears to look like this, um, this is a great resource to reference and um, figure out what may have, may have caused some of those issues. So talking a little bit about grain quality and the test weight that um, we're going to be having. So uh, coming from the seed industry, I, I believe that a lot of the um, newer genetics have a, have a really nice increase in the test weight that they are producing. So um, as I look at the little incremental yield in increase in yield, I think that that's truly coming from test weight. But you have to ask yourself the question, did 
environmental factors um, affect grain quality and test weight as we get to harvest. Um, some of the common influencers of moisture are moisture stress and leaf diseases. Those can reduce uh, photosynthesis and can result in some lower test weight, lower grain quality um, issues. An early freeze is also something that can affect the, the end of our grain fill um, process. And then certainly ear rots will decrease our grain quality. If you have products that are new on your farm, um, are you evaluating and looking at what the husk cover looks like? So are you happy with that husk cover? I mean, there's, there's benefits and, and drawbacks to both. If you have a loose or a shorter husk cover, that's going to help speed up dry down. But then if you have a tighter or a longer um, husk cover, that's going to have the, um, the benefit of potentially reducing some ear feeding by insects and some potential disease pressure. While you're out there looking at those ears, are you seeing any insect feeding or ear, ear rots um, that may make you evaluate, especially from the insect feeding, um, does, it, it, does it have you evaluate what your um, insecticide program was or the trait package that you um, are currently planting? And then I'm um, really looking forward to next year um, and planning for next year, things like how was your weed control? So if you, if you had um, issues with planting and were really struggling to stay on top of your weed control this year, does that equal us having um, uh, issues in the field that we may have next year in certain areas? It's a really good time to um, review a fall burn down. I'm a big fan of fall burn downs for winter annuals as well as mare's tail control. So um, really evaluating if the chem program that you used this year was successful or if you need to make tweaks in 2020 to address any kind of weed escapes that um, you weren't able to control this year. My background um, in, in school was looking at nitrogen use efficiency. So um, I'm always looking at how did nitrogen stress impact our crops, um, looking at the, the deficiencies that may have shown up, especially later in the season. So um, do you feel like you're getting the best ROI for the, the input that you put on? Um, if you're at a really, if you're at a really good um, yield level and looking to go to that next level, is late season nitrogen something that you want to um, potentially look at doing in the future? Now's the time to kind of go out there and evaluate how the crop stands today and if that's something that in future years would make sense. Again, going back to the, the nitrogen deficiencies, especially with all of the moisture that was out um, and, and something that we had to deal with, how does that impact uh, where you feel like your baseline for, for your fertility program going forward should be? So reviewing your tissue samples and soil samples and really considering maybe um, is it time to consider or redo some grid sampling to, again, figure out what that baseline of fertility is. As we kind of wrap up all of these um, topics I, I, and start planning to uh, 2020, I did want to point out for FBN members that um, one of the tools that your um, AE or AM have at their disposal is the crop plan. And I just wanted to show this example of something that comes as part of the crop plan. It's an ROI report. So um, again, as you're, as you're starting to think about 2020, um, we've got this that you can go through and really put together a whole farm plan looking at all of the crop inputs, whether it be chem, um, all crop protection and seed, and evaluate what your inputs are going to be for next year, what your potential ROI could be given what you think are 
best and worst case scenarios for, for next year. So Neil McCormick put this together and it's an excellent program if you want to sit down with a rep and um, put together this plan. They'd be more than willing to do that. So please reach out to them. And with that, I think um, that that covers the information that I have for, for everyone this evening. Um, again, if you have any questions, please um, submit them through the control panel. You'll see there the questions box. Um, let's see, I've got a couple that have come in and so I will hit on them. The first one is asking, um, so my crop was planted late and now I'm afraid I won't be able to um, get to black layer before our first frost. Okay, um, is there anything I can do? So this is a good question. I actually had a very similar question from a grower the other day. He is in a scenario where he's irrigating. So um, he's asking if he should turn his irrigation off and essentially stress that plant into early maturity. Um, unfortunately, in the scenario where you do have irrigation, um, I, I would not do that um, simply because I think that you're going to be losing uh, not only yield but test weight by doing that. Um, and ultimately the crop this year has had enough challenges to get to the point where it is today. We don't want to decrease that yield potential any more than we have to. So um, I probably would not turn off the irrigation if that's an option. Um, outside of that, unfortunately, we really don't have any. We really don't have any quick ways to speed up the crop to get it to um, to harvest. Okay. So the other question that I have here is. Um, anthracnose. So you mentioned anthracnose in your presentation. Is there anything in season that you can do to help prevent it? Um, so unfortunately, anthracnose is not um, a disease that will benefit from the application of like a fungicide in season. So um, the best bet for Managing anthracnose, if, if it is something that um, you're starting to deal with or or are dealing with on a regular basis, is probably going to be your um, your genetic selection. So just per picking products that um, to plant that don't don't um, have that susceptibility to the anthracnose. I think a couple of other options would be crop rotation and um, uh, making sure that your that your residue is well worked in if you're in a in a tillage operation, but um, unfortunately, the application of fungicide in season um, that's not going to do anything for uh, anthracnose. Okay, so um, with that, we we have covered quite a few things, and I kind of uh, breezed through them pretty quickly. Uh, there's a there's a lot that goes into making these final decisions um, as we go into harvest. So I will say this that um, if you want to learn more about any of these topics um, in depth, we have a lot of agronomy resources at emergence.fbn.com. So uh, we have not only podcasts covering some of these specific topics more in depth, but we also have some emergence blog. Excuse me emergence blocks that uh, also cover them far more in depth than I was able to do with the time here this evening. So um, please, please look into that if you have more questions. Don't forget to um, text your questions to agronomy. Um, and that number again is 326, 326 at any time. We're here to help you. And I hope you guys have a safe and happy harvest and best of luck for a productive um, harvest and yields.